All right, so in the last video, we left off um, thinking about this situation here of an object that is falling under the influence of gravity. It has some initial velocity, and we're, we're trying to tie position in with area somehow, right? This connection that, on the one hand, we know that position is the antiderivative of the velocity, right? So that if, if, if v of t is the initial velocity, right, minus the acceleration, then our position should be the antiderivative. So it should be v0 times t minus 16t squared, possibly plus some, some initial position, right? And if you think a little bit about what's going on, right? Now, remember that this is, this is velocity, right? This is the graph of velocity as a function of time. So what's it saying? Well, we're starting with some initial positive velocity, right? So the object is traveling up, right? But as it travels up, it slows down because gravity is acting against it. Just think about throwing a ball up into the air, right? So at some point, it's going to reach its maximum height, and it's going to start to come back down. So what happens at that maximum? Well, we can, we can think in terms of, of calculus, in terms of applications of the derivative, and we say, oh, we know when the maximum happens. It happens at a critical number, right? It happens when the derivative is zero. But the derivative of position is just velocity. So it happens when velocity is zero, right? Where? Here the graph, right? There's the zero for our velocity. So we can get that number, v0 over 32. We can plug it in, right? And we can calculate how far the object went, right? And we're going to do just that over here. Um, so we say, okay, how, um, how high did that object go, right? And in fact, why don't we go with this, this situation here? Time zero, the object height is zero feet. So the initial position is just zero. So that's gone, right? Because if s of zero is zero, right? Well, when I plug t equals zero, that's gone, that's gone. So if I want zero, that's gotta be zero too, right? Now, um, a couple of these questions we already answered. What's the initial velocity? Well, that's your velocity when t equals zero. It's the constant term in your velocity function, right? So the initial velocity, 48 feet per second, right? That's your v sub zero. Okay, what about maximum height? Well, as we just said, the maximum height is going to occur when your velocity is zero, right? Because it travels up, reaches that peak, right? And at that peak, right, we were moving upwards, velocity was positive, slows to zero for a brief moment in time, it's there, it's stopped, it's stationary, and then it comes back down again, okay? Velocity is zero at the peak. So. Um, so we know that the max is when v of t equals zero, right? But v of t is right here, minus 32 plus 48. So we know that it happens at, it occurs at a time of, t equals 48 over 32, okay? Um, 3 times 16 over 2 times 16, so that reduces to 3 over 2, or 1.5 seconds, if you like, okay? So that's this time here. Um, now, what is the height? Well, so the uh, sort of max height, s max, if you like, is going to be s at 3 over 2, okay? So our s of t is, well, we have it sitting right here, right? Um, s of t is going to be, it's going to be 48t minus 32t squared. Sorry, 16t squared, right? Because we divide by 2, 16. Okay, so it's going to be 48 times 3 over 2 minus 16 times 3 over 2 squared. Okay, all right, so that's uh, 24 
times 3, uh, 9 over 4, 16 over 4 minus 4 times 9, okay, so 72 minus 36, which is 36. Good. All right. Now there's, there's one other thing that I want to point out here. That height, right, happens at this point in time here, right? And we started with a height of zero. Um, I want to tie that into what is the area here, right? What is the area? So that area, I mean, just looking at the triangle, right, we know that it's going to be one half the base. So V0 over 32 times the height, V0. So 1 half times 1 over 32 times V0 squared. Okay? All right. What do I get if I, uh, if I calculate that for, for this? I have... Right, so for V0 equals 48, I have an area of 1 half times 1 over 32 times 48 times 48. Okay, now 48 over 32 is, is 3 over 2, right? We worked that out before. So this is... Uh, one half times three over two, so it's three quarters of forty-eight, which is oh, thirty-six, thirty-six, right? Um, so you'll notice that this fits again, right? The the area of this triangle, it is exactly that displacement that we get from time zero uh, until we hit the time where we hit the maximum velocity, right? And if you let time continue to run from there. The other thing you might notice is now velocity becomes negative, right? The ball starts coming back down. Okay? So as it starts coming back down, what's going to happen? Well, the total displacement, meaning the difference between initial and final positions, right? It's now going to be less than that maximum because it's coming back down, right? It's going to be the, the kind of final minus the initial, if you like. Right? Um, and so what happens is what you're going to do is you're going to have to calculate this area which is going to be, well, okay, we can calculate the area, but we want that to be assigned a negative value because it lies below the x-axis, right? And so when you want that final position, what you should be doing is, is subtracting these areas, right? Um, so that's another thing that you're going to see um, as you move forward, right? And as you look at this integration problem, that somehow the things that you're trying to calculate here, uh, you make sense of them in terms of these differences of areas, right? The total displacement, total area, um, you're going to be seeing this sort of scenario playing itself out over and over again. And pretty soon, we'll be able to make this connection precise. We'll be able to understand exactly this connection between position uh, and velocity, or if you like, antiderivatives and area. We're going to make that precise um, in a little while.